Welcome back to the third segment on dynamic programming. In the first two videos, um, the, the links are at the bottom in the description. I explained how to use DP to solve a, a simple question, something as is, is giving a string determine if it's a palindrome. And I, 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 I basically said that you do not have to use DP to solve it, but the goal was to learn the technique with something as simple as this. Then I use the same technique to solve in the second video. How can you find the longest palindrome substring giving a string? And I use the same technique for that. Now I'm going to use the same technique to, to solve, find the longest palindrome subsequence. The longest palindrome subsequence. So let's see what a subsequence is first. So let's read the question. Giving a string S, find the longest palindromic subsequence length in S. So they want the length of the subsequence, not the subsequence itself, just the length. Okay. So what is a subsequence? A subsequence is a sequence that can be derived from another sequence by deleting some or no elements without changing the order of the remaining elements. So let's take a look at this. If I delete A, the subsequence is B, 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 B without changing the orders of the B. So the length of that is 4. So I need to return 4. Let me see this. If I delete C and I delete D, I have two. Okay, here there's nothing to delete. The answer is three. All right, so uh, I'm gonna use the same technique that I used in the first two videos. So if you have not watched those two videos, please go ahead and watch them because I'm not going to explain the technique. I'm just going to go into the solution and explain the solution. All right, so let's, let me explain a simple case as AA. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know how to derive this simple matrix here. So this 1001 matrix comes from the fact that for each character, you give it a 1. So for A, 1. For this A, 1. If you look at the, here, we have three A's. Or if you want to call it B's, it doesn't matter. So for this B, you give it a 1. For this B, you give it a 1. And for the third B, you give it a 1. So you have diagonals of ones. So that's the first iteration. That's the first case. So now the next case, we need to compare. Does this A equal to this A? That's what we need to do now. We need to compare. Are these two A's equal to each other? The answer is yes. If they are equal to each other, take whatever value that's here and add two, the number two to it, and place the results in, the, in here. Place it here. And I'll explain to you how to get that exact um, corner. So, if you, let's say, and then you return whatever value this is. And that's your answer. I know it's easy when you look at it, but it's actually easy when you're doing it as well. So, let's say you have A and B. A and B. So, we start with our diagonals. And then we ask ourselves this question. Is, does A equal to B? No. If it doesn't? You take whatever value is bigger between the two diagonals and you add and you add and you put it here. Don't add it, just put it there. And that's it. And literally you return whatever this is. One. And that's the solution. So let's try it with something bigger. Let's try it with B B B B. So the first trick here is we're gonna first we'll have all our ones. One, 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 one. And then we're going to compare these two Bs. Are these two Bs equal to each other? These two Bs signifies this array here. I mean, this 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 matrix. 1, 0, 0, 1. That's what these two Bs signifies. Are they equal? Yes. So take this value and add 2 to it and put it here. Same technique as above. Same thing we did here. Now we're going to compare these two values. These two Bs signifies 1, 0, 0, 1. Bottom array. I mean the bottom matrix. So are these two Bs equal to each other? Yes, they are equal to each other. Take this value, add 2 to it. Put it here. Next, we're going to compare this B with that B. Are these two Bs equal to each other? Yes. This matrix signifies this 
over here signifies two zero one two right here so take this value add two to it and put it here two plus one three and then return three and that's your answer three it's really that simple all right so let us write the algorithm for this and then we'll test all of these guys over here so let's start with our basics uh, let's get length const and s dot length next thing is we need our dp so const dp again this is the same thing i've done in previous um previous videos how i defined it my dp array fill it up fill up the array with um zeros to a map and then for each value in the array create another array of size n fill it up with zero and that's it so that will create our matrix for us this creates the matrix of zero 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 that's all it does so now we need to do diagonals the diagonals let i equal zero i is less than n i plus plus the diagonals are the easiest one because now we are saying dp i of i equals one that's it we're done that's for the diagonals so that will create our ones one one the next is the actual solution dp solution so we're going to say for let r no let c equals one c is less than n c plus plus let r equals zero r plus c is less than n r plus plus let's take a note of r plus c call that w all right so i'm going to stop there first i explained in my last video what how to get what r plus c was and where it was coming from so if you if you missed it please go watch it but a quick summary r plus c is the, is the length of the substrings so that, that's why i'm taking note of that so and and why am I using one here? In my previous videos, I started with two, because I, because I am skipping the second uh, case of 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 doing um of of doing two first and then creating a solution for three. I'm going straight into the solution. Also, because I'm comparing two by two, so in this case, I'm comparing the first two. Then I'm comparing the second two. Then I'm comparing the first and the last. Hence why I said C equals 1. So over here, if we start, C will be here. And R will be here. So it's going to compare the two Bs. That's why I said C equals 1. So we're going to say if S of R equal S of W, we're going to do something. If it does not equal, we do something else. We, and we already know if it doesn't equal. If it doesn't equal, we'll take the biggest value between the diagonals, whatever is bigger, and we'll place it here. So let's do that. So dprw equals the biggest one. So we use math max. So we can say the biggest one from the diagonals. dp will be r plus 1 for the, no, r, I'm sorry, w minus 1. That's the first diagonal. Or from the second diagonal would be r plus one and w. That's the second diagonal. But if they do equal, we need to add two to the bottom value. Whatever this is, we add two to it. Whatever this is, we add two to it. So to do that, we're gonna say dp r plus 1, w minus 1, plus 2, and that's it. So it takes r plus 1 is the second row, or whatever r is, r minus 1 is the, whatever the column is, just reduce it by 1, and it gets you that value. And that's our solution. It's really that simple. Let us return, define, uh, let's return um, the, the far corner, and that's it. 
So the first row and the, and the furthest value to the right would always have the answer. Let's save this and let's test our solution. Perfect. So 3, because you can delete A. 4, because you can delete A. 2, because you can delete C and B. 1, because either one. 2, nothing to delete. 1, because A, nothing to delete. Even if you delete all of them, you can't, you can't add new values. And 3, correct answers. So we have our longest, that's the longest uh, palindromic subsequence. Thank you.